home batteries are not just for solar. Today, I'm gonna to be demonstrating a few of the top products available to you if you can't have solar panels, or if you're thinking of installing solar panels in the future. We're gonna be talking time of use tariffs, EV car charging, and batteries without solar. Let's go. So let's start by breaking down how standalone battery storage works. So any one of these three models can utilize off-peak energy. This could be something like an EV tariff or a heat pump tariff, for example. So you can purchase energy when it's the cheapest possible. So a classic example of this off-peak rate, half 11 till half five, it's normally say 25% of the cost of a peak rate. And effectively your batteries can charge when it's cheapest on the grid and then deliver that power back to your home to save you buying in peak energy. Now, some of the more premium models like the Sige Energy and the Powerwall 3 use AI or algorithms in order to be able to work out how much to buy and when to buy it. So effectively, home batteries utilize off-peak energy, they charge up, they then discharge to the home during peak times when they've run out. If you run out early, then it'll buy it in at peak rate, but assuming it will last at the end of the day, the cycle then continues when that off-peak window happens again. I think one of the biggest key parts, all of these brands and manufacturers offer a system that gives you whole house backup. And what this effectively means is should the grid power go down, so long as you've got power left in your battery, you can effectively last off grid and your house continues to work. And this one doesn't do whole house backup, does a limited version, but Give Energy also make their all-in-one unit that does offer whole house backup. So let's start by looking at a bit of a product overview of the different products that are sat behind me. These are all options if you're thinking for battery only. Now the Sige Energy and Powerwall 3 do have an optional solar input within them. So they can be set up as battery only, or if you have solar panels, they will work with them as well. This particular Give Energy model is battery only. However, they do make alternative versions. So let's start by breaking down why I would pick any one of these three products. When you look at cheaper alternatives in the market, they often don't have that establishment that's sat behind them, that maturity to be able to back up things like warranties. You give energy warranty, for example, is a 12 year unlimited cycles on their battery. Powerwall is 10 year unlimited cycles and your Sige Energy is a 10 year warranty. There is a limitation to the amount of throughput in a Sige Energy battery storage system. Now, if you want a full product breakdown, I've done one for both the Give Energy system and the Powerwall 3 on our channel. And if you subscribe, I'm going to be doing a deeper breakdown of the Sige Energy. Sige Energy is a new battery storage system that's come into our lineup. So anybody that knows us will know that we've installed the Give Energy for years. We're platinum installers. We've won awards for doing the Powerwall 3, but this is the first time that we've shown the Sige Energy in person on our channel. That's because I've been really impressed by what the Sige Energy does. And I think it really plugs a gap in between the Give Energy, that's kind of your mid-range brand and your Powerwall 3 that's kind of top of the range. And Sige Energy kind of sits between the two of them. So we'll start with Give Energy. This is the AC coupled inverter. The inverter is a three kilowatt inverter and that can couple up with any of their low voltage battery ranges. So that's a 5.12 or a 9.5 kilowatt hour battery in the Give Energy range. You can also install more than one of these AC coupled inverters with an EMS. Again, another video that will be available on the channel for that as a set of kit. You can also upgrade and increase in size to their all-in-one unit, which is the Give Energy all-in-one, which has a six kilowatt inverter and has a 13.5 kilowatt hour battery. Some seriously good bits of kit. One of the key reasons why we work with Give Energy is their headquarters is based in Stoke in the UK. So when you need to speak to somebody about aftercare, you can just pick up the phone and have a great conversation with them, which is what we want to see. Your next one is the Powerwall 3 by Tesla Energy. So I appreciate the Powerwall 3 may well be a little bit of a Marmite product in that you will either really like Tesla as a brand or you may well not do. But one thing I can say, if we remove the aspects of whether you do or don't like Tesla and just focus solely on the actual product itself, it is absolutely exceptional. Powerwall 3 only comes in a single size, 13.5 kilowatt hours. 
you can buy DC expansion packs to expand the battery storage also in 13.5 kilowatt hours. Now this packs a serious bit of performance. It's got an 11 kilowatt inverter and it can charge up to five kilowatts in speed as well. So essentially it can discharge itself in just a little over an hour. It's absolutely massive. So when you do go into the whole home backup mode, effectively you can keep operating as normal. This then brings me on to Sage Energy. This almost offers a combination of what both offer. So the Sage Energy is available in both single phase and three phase installations. I've actually left the sides off on purpose so I can show you some of the ports on the side of it in a second, but it does have a fancy case that sits over the top. The inverter sizes range from three to 12 kilowatts in a single phase. And on your three phase, it ranges from six to 30 kilowatts. That's a serious bit of performance. Now, the good thing about these systems is they can also operate in parallel, which basically means if you start with a smaller inverter and wanted to upgrade, or if you start with a big inverter and want to upgrade and you need more performance, you can just add another inverter. And the batteries are completely stackable. They essentially plonk one on top of another and you can have up to six battery stacks. One of the other great things I really like about the Sage Energy Battery Storage is the fact that it now offers DC EV charging. Uh, what this basically means is in future adaptations that you will be able to back your whole house up off the battery that's stored in your EV. You can already do EV charging, but these are gonna come via future software revisions. And that's just another pack like you see below, simply plonk straight onto your Sage Energy inverter. Now, one of the key differences between the Powerwall 3 and the Sage Energy is the fact that the Sage Energy can also work alongside generators. So if you're working on battery only or battery with solar and that then kicks out, you can wire a petrol or diesel generator into the gateway so it can effectively work in tandem. So if you know you're gonna be off-grid for a long period of time, it can actually work in tandem with maybe your existing off-grid system, uh, but get you a bit greener and a bit more independent effectively. So which one should you choose out of all these products? I'll come back to that a little bit later on. So how do you size the battery storage system for your home? And this is a really great question. You've got to look at your overall household usage throughout the course of a 12 month period. So let's say hypothetically speaking, you use 3,650 kilowatt hours per year. If you're going for a battery only installation, you would want to divide that by the number of days that are in the year. And effectively you would be looking to get 10 kilowatt hours worth of battery storage. Effectively, if you were buying that energy then in an off peak rate, you'd probably save yourself about two to two pounds 50 every single day on a very repetitive basis. Plus get a load of the other benefits like whole house backup, though I'm sure will be important. So effectively you could save in the region of about six, 700 pounds a year. This means the average payback period would be somewhere in the region of about seven to nine years when you go for battery storage by itself. All these systems can actually be installed alongside solar which will help bring the return on investment down particularly when you've got high energy usage. Now when you look at the modular systems and when you increase the amount of consumption batteries start to make more sense because when you add an extra battery module onto any of these the battery modules themselves are much lower in price. So where the initial capital return on investment will be much higher for a whole system when you add extra batteries on they will take a much lower lower period of time to be able to pay themselves back because they're not expensive. So essentially, the more energy you use, the more sense battery storage will start to make for you. So let's have an idea of cost and what these systems would, roughly speaking, cost to install. So a Give Energy AC coupled inverter, which is the one I've got here, alongside, say, a five kilowatt hour battery would cost just shy of about £5,000. If you go for a 9.5, you get much better benefits with going for bigger battery storage. It costs the manufacturer less to manufacture and therefore it only costs you about £1,000 more for almost double the storage. Remember me mentioning earlier on about the more battery storage you buy, the better the return on investment gets. So if you've got high usage and you buy bigger batteries, effectively you, that return on investment will start to make a bit more sense. The Powerwall 3 is 
is only available in a 13.5 kilowatt hour version. Powerwall also make a DC expansion pack, again 13.5 kilowatt hours. A leading Powerwall 3 with a gateway will cost you in the region of about £7,700 fully installed, with a few caveats. So some installers will do them cheaper, but they'll do them under what's called a G98 application. As I mentioned earlier, I've done a full breakdown of what that means and how that works on our channel. The next one is Siege Energy. Now this sits somewhere in between the Give Energy and the Powerwall 3 in terms of physical price. The main thing with the Siege Energy, as I mentioned before, is its modular expandability. So you can mix and match different battery sizes, a bit like the Give Energy system, but these can deliver more peak performance. Now I would expect the Siege Energy system for a very similar size to the Give Energy system, you would probably get slightly more battery storage for slightly less. So because these comes in eight kilowatt hour battery modules, you're not able to kind of compare line on line, but effectively if you bought 16 kilowatt hours worth of battery storage with a Siege Energy inverter, you'd probably expect to pay very similar to Powerwall 3, a little bit more bang for your buck. One of the things that's becoming more prevalent is the usage of smart tariffs. So I'm gonna give an example of here of Octopus Intelligent Go. This is where your EV will choose different times of the day to charge. You may also get something like Octopus Agile. Now I know I've kind of honed in on Octopus there a little bit, but these were just examples that rolled off my tongue. You can get any of these inverters and batteries to map alongside those smart tariffs. So like the Give Energy system, for example, works alongside the My Energy Optimizer, a third party software. The Powerwall 3 works alongside the Net Zero app. There are a couple of limitations around tracking the smart tariffs with that and the Siege Energy System uses essentially backs on to ChatGPT to be able to make the best decisions as and when and directly links with the Octopus API. But in order for any of these batteries to work properly and for you to get the best possible tariff, it's very common that you're gonna need a smart meter. Now for those people that can't access a smart meter because they either don't want one or can't have one, they may well live a bit more rurally, it's still very much possible to get yourself onto things like an economy seven rate or certain limited EV tariff but the majority of the best possible tariffs come via a smart meter. Most energy providers like Octopus, like Tomato Energy or Eon will give you a smart meter upgrade without any cost. All you've got to do is ask. When I mean smart meter, I mean Smets 2 meter. The old Smets 1 meters do have limited functionality when it comes to smart tariffs, but in order to be able to access the best possible tariffs, uh, Smets 2 meter is what you want to be asking your energy supplier for. So each one of these has their own specific usage, and I'm going to try and summarize that in the best way that I know how. I would say for your average family household, family of four, or a couple coming up to retirement, Give Energy would probably be my preferred option because it's kind of the lower of the price range and still offers the same level of warranties. If you're a higher usage household, then you probably want to be looking more towards the Powerwall 3 by Tesla Energy or the Siege Energy. Now, if you have a three phase installation, so let's say you've got a swimming pool, for example, my suggestion would probably be leaning towards the Siege Energy or Give Energy do make a high voltage version because Powerwall 3, whilst it can track what three phases are doing, can only back up and supply a single phase. So fantastic for high usage single phase households, but when it comes to three phase installations, then you would wanna go for Siege Energy. Now you also want to be considering then the whole house backup, which all three offer a version of it. So if you've got things like electric gates, security systems, smart lighting, for example, you want them to be able to be seamlessly backed up in the event of a power outage. All three of these brands will offer that. One of the key reasons why we pick these is the great aftercare service from all of them. They all deal with it a little bit differently, but effectively in the event that something goes wrong, we can simply pick up the phone. The aftercare is there because you're spending just that little bit more on the actual products themselves. So in the event that you have a problem, pick up the phone and just get whatever problem it is sorted out. So there's a couple of installation considerations that you want to give when selecting any one of these three products effectively. One of them is 
the time of year. So during the summer, I think it's a fair expectation all of these will work as normal. Now, one of the upsides to the Siege Energy and the Powerwall 3 is, particularly in the Powerwall 3's case, it offers individual cell level heating. What that basically does is looks at when you're about to use the load in your home, calculates how many battery cells it needs to heat up and essentially preheats those ready for use. So that can go down to minus 20. The Powerwall 3 is fully submersible. If you're in a place that's prone to flooding, that's probably going to be your better option. Now, if you like the modular capability, Siege Energy also will go down to minus 20. It's got individual pads in the actual batteries themselves that can heat the modules. Now, one of the things I particularly like about Siege Energy with its modular capability is if you have a failure in one battery, because they're individual with their own individual battery management system, effectively, if you have a failed battery, the whole system will continue to work. It will just discount that out of the equation. Now, the downside to some of the Give Energy system is the fact that they don't have the individual cell level heating. Now, if you're charging at night, they will naturally warm themselves up, the battery cells, but that doesn't have the same level of technology, which is why you pay a little bit less they'll go down to minus 10. Now, if you're, for example, mounting this in a garage, any one of them are gonna be suitable. But if you're leaning more towards an outdoor installation, you might wanna think about parting with a couple of extra pounds and going for more of this side of the range effectively or your, your Power Wall 3. They all have loads of different safety features built in, like the Siege Energy, for example, has individual battery extinguishers built into them, and they all use a very safe technology called lithium ion phosphate batteries, all at different voltages. Now, one of the things you want to be considerate of is where you're mounting these batteries or where you're asking your installer to mount them. My strong advice and kind of in line with a set of guidance called PAS 63100 is essentially not to mount these batteries up in an attic, not to put them underneath stairs. You don't want to put them in a bedroom or in an exit in or out of a property or within one meter on the outside of doors and windows. Now, do remember at the time of filming, this is best practice advice. Sometimes it's not reasonably practicable to follow every single piece of guidance that is out there. It is possible to have a conversation with your engineer, look at doing a sensible risk assessment, and then it may well be the case that we might decide to install it in a cellar with one exit, but we might decide to build a little fire enclosure around it or put mains into link smoke alarms, for example. I'm not for one minute suggesting that any of these technologies are particularly unsafe, but what you don't want is one of these technologies caught up in a fire. You want to be installing your battery somewhere where it's going to be safe. And ultimately, you want to protect it from the, any fire that would be inside of your home so it doesn't get damaged. So that big investment that you make is kept really, really safe. So that's a bit of a brief overview of the different brands and manufacturers that we supply and that I would ultimately recommend. Just as a reminder, we've done a deep dive into the Give Energy and Power Wall 3 that's available on the channel. Uh, and also up and coming, I'm going to be doing one on the Siege Energy, a big deep dive. So don't forget to follow the channel because uh, you'll miss out if you don't. Thank you.